Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week, I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome everybody to another live session in music lesson webinar with Carlos. Today we will cover different topics, such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions, and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned and let's get started. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah Jo, again for uh, such a great video. And also, um, Sarah Jo transcribed this song by Thundercat, Buzz in the Streets. I think that was uh, Thundercat's first album. Yeah, well, the first time I saw, uh, I listened, you know, to this great bass player. I said, wow, you know, so talented. And then not too long ago, I saw him jamming with Herbie Hancock. So, wow. Uh, so much uh, so much to admire so much talent around so uh, again uh, thanks Sarah for for this uh, musical introduction and maybe uh, maybe uh, soon we will uh, uh, go through that chart yeah because uh, I think Sarah transcribed the Thundercats bass line note for note yeah so I would like to see uh, how it goes so we're gonna start and I want to start uh, with chromatic scales but then I want to work with modes we started with modes in model in a model interchange format also some of my students have been asking me about triton substitution voicings triton substitution dominance so I would like to go through through those yeah not only triton substitution of the primary dominant but also triton substitutions of all the secondary dominants yeah and yeah let's in in get some ideas and also uh, we have a couple more videos as usual and why don't we start okay chromatic scales yeah that's a great way to warm up last week we did a flat this week, we're going to go with D flat. And here we go. We're going to play with our left hand, root. Right hand, we're going to play the, the scale up and down. And we're going to sing at the same time. And now we're going to pay attention, especially in the descending part. Yeah, and with D flat, we're going to end up having quite a bit of uh, double flats. Yeah, and that's just part of, the, part of the scale. Why don't we start? Do, D. Do. 
descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, so that was our first pass. And now I want to um, do another pass on uh, D flat. Now I'm changing, yeah. So the first first pass was open open key signatures, yeah. So we talked about open key signatures, traditional key signatures. Now we're gonna go do traditional key signatures, but we're gonna also change our way of practicing, yeah. So we are not gonna play it in sync. We're just gonna touch the keys, yeah, of the keyboard, or you can just touch the strings of the guitar or bass, but we are gonna sing. Yeah, we're gonna hope to <laughs> see if we can sing in tune. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if this works. Do, ti, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Good, so far so good. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, Le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay. And now we're going to go back to open, open keys. And now I would like to work with bass clef. Bass clef. So what are we going to do? We're going to play a major triad. Major triad. And then we're going to play a bass line. We're going to sing and play at the same time. And. Do, ti, re, re, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, do. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa. gonna take it to another level yeah we're gonna go to we're gonna use um, traditional key signatures yeah so we have five flats five flats for D flat yeah and we're gonna also practice we're gonna take it to the next level we're going to touch the keys of the keyboard but we're not gonna play we're gonna sing and the only thing we're gonna have is just a triad just to ground us in D flat so here we go. Do, ti, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Okay, now descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, and that was our warm-ups, our warm-ups with chromatic scales. Okay, so now I wanted to start working with modes. We started with modes last time, yeah, and we're working with modes more like in a model interchange setup. So this is a nice graphic about major modes. Yeah, we can actually, we should explore the modes of the melodic minor scale, which it's coming up. And then we should also explore with the modes of the harmonic minor scale. Yeah, and if we can kind of have a certain level of fluidity, yeah, that's going to be very, very important if we are performers, songwriters, composers, yeah, and to be able to navigate within our uh, chord scale system. Okay, so as we can see there in the graphic, you know, uh, C to C, major or Ionian, D to D, second degree, Dorian. Third degree, Phrygian. Fourth degree, Lydian. Fifth degree, Mixo or Mixolydian. Sixth degree, Natural Minor or Aeolian mode. Seventh degree, Locrian mode. And of course, yeah, and that's one way of seeing it. And to me, even more useful is if we can see everything within one key. 
Yeah, and that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna go major, Lydian, Phrygian, Le uh, sorry, <laughs> major, Dorian, Dorian, then Phrygian, Lydian, Mixo, Aeolian or natural minor, Locrian. Yeah, so that's actually a more useful, in my opinion. Yeah, so for, for it is a composer. And why don't we start in, we already explored key of C and F. Now I want to explore key of B flat. And we're going to start with our key of B flat. And what is interesting is we not only have the scale, but we have the chords they can fit, they can pair together with that scale. In chord scale harmony, sometimes that is called chord pairing. In Berkeley style, chord scale relationships. Okay, either one, yeah, means the same thing, is how we can connect a, a scale and a different type of chords together. Yeah, and, and that can be our, our environment, yeah, our uh, chord scale environment when we play, when we improvise, when we compose. So why don't we start, we're in the key of B flat. Key of B flat, and let me see if I can make my keyboard even, I can zoom in if that is, let me see. Okay, I think that's even better. So we are going to, we're going to sing the scale. We're going to go up and down. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Descending, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. By the way, uh, especially for all my Latin American and European students, we are using movable do system. Yeah, not fixed do, movable do. And um, in another opportunity, I'm going to talk about both systems. And why is it that I use movable dough, actually, in a very short sentence. I love movable dough, even though I started using fixed dough. That's how I trained myself early on in my studies. But then I shift, yeah, because I saw how beautifully it just connects with all um, the chord scale uh, harmonic system, which is the system that I later chose, is my main harmonic framework for everything I do. Yeah, from a pop song to writing for orchestra, everything. Yeah, and that's, that's the fra a harmonic framework I use. So now we're gonna go descending. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Chords that can be built on the major scale in B flat, major seven, major six. We can have a major seven, nine, major six, nine. And we can have a major seven, nine and 13. I don't know, maybe here, here too. Yeah. And that's our major scale. So now we're going to explore other, other scales. B flat Dorian. Yeah, so everything is on B flat in harmony. We are going to, we call this modal interchange. Yeah, so you are not changing, you're not modulating, you're not even moving to other uh, uh, tonal center. You are staying in one tonal center, but, but you are changing scales. So we're in major, but maybe now you want to improvise with Dorian then maybe uh, you're improvising now with another scale, maybe Lucran mode, maybe Lydian, yeah, and yeah, I'm now uh, Mixo, and how about, and now we can go and uh, work with a, uh, a Aeolian mode, yeah, and so on, yeah, and I haven't moved. I haven't moved from B flat. So now we're going to sing our Dorian mode up and down. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, te, do. Descending. Do, te, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Chord pairing. Minor 7 on B flat. 
We can have a minor 7 9. We can have a minor 7 9 with an 11, 11 9. And even in some cases, we can add a 13th. Yeah, so, and that's a very interesting, very interesting sonority. Now, let's move on. We're going to go to our Phrygian mode. We're going to sing. So, now, color notes in the Phrygian mode, we have a Ra, flat 2. We're also going to have a flat 6, Le. And let's sing together. Let's sing and play. Do, Ra, Mi, Fa, So, Le, Te, Do. Descending. Do, Te, Le, So, Fa, Mi, Ra, Do. And what I like to do is also, I like to play all the notes at the same time. And hold the scale down so I can see all the notes painted on the keyboard. That's a, uh, our cluster technique. Yeah, cluster is a term that uh, means a chord made out of consecutive seconds. Yeah, so we're going to use that technique in order to visualize. I remember when I was 11 years old and I was studying with um, my uncle, a composer Edgar Varcarcel in Lima. And he used to tell me, Carlos, you have to learn how to see. You have to learn how to see it. Of course, I didn't have a clue what uh, he meant. Yeah. And uh, later on, I realized, oh, I need to learn to see all aspects of my music. I need to learn to visualize them. Even to virtualize is even a better word. So in my mind, I, I, I can train myself to see all the musical forms, scales, patterns, bass line, keys, images, then hear them. Yeah, and also then feel them. How do they feel to my hands? Yeah, so I have the complete, I have the visual framework, auditory framework, and even kinesthetic framework. Yeah, all, all building, constantly building. Yeah, within me. Yeah, so then when I improvise or I compose, you know, you have that repository of a virtual imagery. Yeah, that is ready to express itself. Yeah, so it's a, a very powerful thing to, to practice. So now we're gonna, we're gonna uh, play. Do, Ra, Mi, Fa, So, Le, Te, Do. Descending. Do, Te, Le, So, Fa, Mi, Ra, Do. Let's build a cluster. Lower tetrachord, lower four notes. Upper four notes. And that's my B flat Phrygian mode. That's how it looks like. Okay. And now chord pairing. The traditional chords that are associated with a Phrygian motif, if you ever go through any Berkeley uh, um, harmonic books, yeah, would be the minor seven. We cannot use a flat nine on a, a minor seven chord. I'm not gonna go into that yet. And then we have an 11th. That's a possibility. But what makes this mode to me very interesting is when I change the chord pairing. Instead of connecting it with a minor 7, I choose to connect it with a sus. Sus 7 chord, so... It almost gives it like a dominant flamenco type of vibe. Yeah, and I can have a sus chord. I can have a sus chord with a flat 9. I even can have a B flat sus with a sharp nine. Okay, very nice mode to explore. Now we're gonna move on. B flat Lydian. Yeah, Lydian mode. And let's build our scale. Color note would be Fi, the sharp four. Do, Re, Mi, Fi, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Descending. Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fi, Mi, Re, Do. And let's build a cluster. And that's how my B flat Lydian mode looks like. Yeah, my lower four notes, my upper four notes. 
Now, chord pairing. I can use my Lydian mode with a major 7, with a major 6, with a major 7, 9, with a major 6, 9. I can have a B flat major 7, 9 and sharp 11. I could also have a B flat 6, 9 sharp 11. Let's see how it sounds here. You know, both, I, actually they are both usable. And then the last one, I don't know if you can see it well. It's a B flat major 7, 13 sharp 11, 9. Yeah, so I can use those chords together with my Lydian mode. Now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to Mixolydian. Mixolydian is another interesting mode because I can go either way. I can pair them with dominant chords or I can pair them with sus chords. Yeah, so... Why don't we sing? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Te, Do. The color note here will be the flat 7, Te. Do, Te, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Now we're gonna do our cluster, cluster technique, lower four notes, upper four notes, together. You know, when I practice in, uh, with my students, I have them meditate. We both meditate for like five seconds or ten seconds just on the visual image, on the sound, and on the feeling. Yeah, those three elements yeah, of our direct experience of a um, mixolydian mode. Yeah, and we do that with the intent of uh, memorizing yeah, and creating those very rich internal uh, musical uh, Im imagery. Yeah. Now, now that we have our Mixolydian mode, let's see our chord pairing. We can pair this with a dominant 7, dominant 7, 9. Maybe I can play it here down there. Yeah, it sounds good too. In dominant 7, 9, 13. Up here. Yeah, in both octaves seems to work well. Now, I also can pair my... Mixolydian mode with a sus chord, sus seven chord. In a sus with a ninth. Sus with nine and thirteenth. Okay, that's a that's a nice uh, chord and scale uh, uh, relationship. Okay, so now we're moving on to our Aeolian mode, Aeolian mode, sixth mode of a major scale, and we're gonna sing and play. Do re mi fa sol le te do descending. Do te le sol fa. Now we're going to build our scale, lower four notes, upper four notes, and chord pairing. I can connect the Aeolian mode with a minor 7, minor 7, 9, minor 7, 9, 11. See, and here our color note will be Le, flat 6. And there, uh, you know, I find a lot of um, um, jazz players, contemporary players, sometimes um, a, instead of uh, using a traditional minor 7, sometimes they are using a different type of voicing. It's going to be like a major 7 on the flat 6 over B flat. It's a very nice sound. Yeah. So, another way, yeah, another way of working with the Olean mode. And now we have one more mode to go. Locrian mode. And why did I change it from B flat to A sharp? Because Locrian mode on this note, yeah, on 
B flat actually should be called A sharp because it's related to the key of B. It's related to the key of B. Yeah, so in this case, then we have to call it uh, A sharp, not B flat. So why don't we start? Yeah, Locrian mode on A sharp. Do, Ra, Mi, Fa, Se, Le, Te, Do. Color note, C. Flat five, and of course we have also the flat two. So those two notes are kind of our color notes. Do, ra, mi, fa, se, le, te, do. Descending. Do, te, le, se, fa, mi, ra, do. Lower four notes, upper four notes, cluster together. And that's how my Locrian in A sharp looks like. Chord pairing. I can have my Locrian mode paired with a minor 7 flat 5. I can have a minor 7 flat 5 with an 11th. And I can have a minor 7 flat 5 with a flat 13th. Okay, very nice sound. Also, um, there's another way uh, of playing a Locrian mode. And how about if we have a major seven chord on the flat two? And then that's gonna work. It gives us, it gives us that nice color, yeah, nice color for Locrian. Okay, good. We did a lot of work with modes, yeah. So now I want to do something else. I want to do something more. I'm going to go to, let's work with Partido Alto. Partido Alto. One, Whoops. two, Whoops. one, two, three, okay. four. Okay, one moment. Okay, Partido Alto. And um, yeah, when I was uh, yeah, uh, listening uh, to Ayrton Moreira and then the Brazilian group Azimuth, yeah, I found a group which I thought that was, wow, so interesting. And especially the, where, the way the snare comes in. Yeah, very different from anything I had heard so far. Yeah, so we're going to practice now uh, the groove pattern called uh, Style Partido Alto, which is part of my book. Uh, a Latin riffs with I co, I co authored with pianist Andrew Gordon. So here we go. Let's practice together. Partido Alto. We are going to play this piano piece titled Latin Riff 50. This piece is part of the book titled Ultimate Latin Riffs for Piano, which I co-authored with pianist Andrew Gordon. This rhythm is called Partido Alto and originates in Brazil. It consists of different ways of playing the samba by introducing elements of funk, jazz and rock. The electric bass uses slap technique and the drummer will use heavy accents on the snare. Artists that inspired me to learn this rhythm include Ayrton Moreira and the group Azimuth. Let's practice the first section in a slower tempo. Let's start playing in a slower tempo. 
One, two, three, and. Now we're going to play the second section. We're going to play the last two lines. One, two, three, and. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, actually, I would like to just say something about this groove. Okay, so now it's our time to play without uh, piano, just bass and drums. Yeah, and see if we can go through those chords. Oops, I think my piano is too loud. have this chromatic voicing to C sharp and C minor. See if you can keep up the wrists, yeah, uh, wrists a bit uh, light. Okay, let me move myself, let me move myself. And I like those upper structure triads. Yeah, those are kind of nice. Yeah, so why don't we practice? Yeah, let's practice together. One, two, three. Hello. Okay. Uh, I think I didn't have audio, so I'm gonna do this uh, do this part again. Okay. So I would like to practice. Yeah, this section. And then we have a chromatic descending voicing. We have a couple upper structure triad voicings. And then we go back. Yeah, so why don't we why don't we practice together? Four. So here we go without a keyboard, bass and drums, 180 beats per minute. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Okay, now we're going to practice with a full band at 200 beats per minute. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now, now we're going to practice, but without piano, yeah, without piano at the same speed. So let's give it a try. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're going to take to the full speed, yeah, we're going to go all the way up to 216 beats per minute, yeah, so let's try to keep our wrists really light, yeah, in order to play the, to play uh, those chords, yeah, and uh, let's have fun, let's have fun with this one. Okay, so here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, that was uh, that was kind of fast. Yeah, that was kind of fast. So now we're going to play without the piano at 216 beats per minute. Yeah, so here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this um, presentation of Partido Alto. So let me see the time. Do we have time to do Triton substitutions? Yes, we have time. We have time, yeah? And that's something I really want to do because many of my students are asking me for this and this is something I would like to go through. Triton substitutions, and let me... Um, actually, this is good. This is good here. Okay, Triton substitutions. Number one, we are in a key, key of C, or any other key. So, what is it that starts moving all our harmony in Western music? I would say it's the tritone. That sadly it wants resolution. I would say that's the beginning of everything, yeah, in Western music. I was reading, uh, when I was studying music history, then the, uh, you know, monks, they were uh, da, 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 used to this, you know, more, more like Gregorian chants. See, that was a, a totally different environment. And then with the first time, whoa, what is this? Yeah, so they, they thought that there were some evil forces sneaking in into their musical practice. Anyways, that was a tritone, yeah, in uh, wanting to resolve finally to the one. So, let's fast forward a few hundred years and we have a, a dominant seven wanting to resolve into a tonic. There was a composer, Ernst Toch, and he wrote about the hidden forces of music. And I think uh, reading, I don't know if I recall correctly, you know, almost like you have almost like the symbol of the yin and yang. You have the positive force and the negative force, and you have the line in the middle. So the positive force, the unstable force, will be the dominant force. Yeah, the yang and the yin will be more like the resting force. And the line in the middle is the subdominant force. Yeah, they can go either way. Okay, so going back, going back to my triton substitution lecture. We have a triton substitution. We have a dominant chord resolving into the root. But this triton can have another root. Yeah, in relationship to G in the key of C, my tritone is composed of a 3 and a flat 7. Now, if I move my bass up a tritone, that's why it's called tritone substitution, yeah? I'm gonna move it to D flat. I'm gonna use the same, the same 3 and flat 7. The only thing is that the meaning the changes, it switches. Now, B, it, instead of being a 3, it becomes the flat 7 in relationship to the D flat. And F becomes a 3 in relationship to B flat. Same tritone, yes? And then I have the same force that wants to resolve into the one. So that's actually the essence yeah, of triton substitutions. And I'm using here two symbols, sub 5, 7 of 1, which is more like the Berkeley style uh, naming, or TS, sub 5, 7 of 1, which is the one that I see all the time here in Los Angeles. So anyways, and we're going to also, now we're going to move on to four voices. Four voices, and for this, I wanna. For this, I want to work with again key of C. We have a five seven going resolving to my one. Now, same thing, I'm going to move my bass line up a tritone and I'm going to end up from G to D flat. Now I have a D flat 7. Yeah. But the tritone is the same. Yeah, the tritone, those two notes are the same. And they're going to resolve into C major 7. Now let's explore some other voice leadings. Okay, so now I have my leading tone, T, 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 C, 
see solfege is so important, it's so useful even now. Yeah, it's so important. T, T. Now I'm gonna keep the T on top, but instead of calling it a, 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 a B, I'm gonna call it a C flat. Yeah. T, T. And I have my sub 5, 7 of 1, or a tritone substitution 5, 7 of 1, resolving into the 1. Now let's explore another um, a voice leading set. Now I'm going to have Re on top, resolving to Mi. Re, Mi. Now I'm going to move to my triton substitution. I'm going to go from Fa to Mi. Fa, Mi. This we should do, we should play on all 12 keys. Uh, I'm going to eventually write all this in all 12 keys. I don't know how long it's going to take us to practice, but we should do it. Okay, now we're going to move into the second chord. Last week, last week we did uh, secondary dominance. What is a secondary dominant? It's a dominant chord that resolves to another diatonic chord, which is not the one. Yeah, if we have a diatonic chord that resolves into the one, we're going to call those primary dominants. Every chord that uh, is a dominant chord that doesn't resolve into the one that resolves to the two, three, four, five, or six, we're going to leave the seven out. Okay, I'm not going to talk about that right now. Why? Why do we do this? Okay, that's for another lecture. But right now, yeah, if we're in the key of C, yeah, any dominant chord that resolves to the two, to the three, to the four, to the five, to the six, is going to be a secondary dominant. Okay, so now we have a secondary dominant of two. So I have my two in the key of C. That's a D minor seven. A fifth above, that would be an A7 that resolves into the D minor 7. Now, triton substitution of that A7, I have my A7, triton away, one, two, three, whole steps down. I have an A E flat 7 resolving into the D minor 7. Recap, A7, 5, 7 of 2, resolving to the 2. Sub, 5, 7 of 2, resolving into the 2. Now let's explore the voice leading. Okay, I have here my A7. Oops. Resolving into the two. Now, in this case, I'm going to have Sol, La. Sol, La. Now, E flat 7, which is the tritone substitution of the A7. So I have le et la Quien te la Now it's time to explore other voice leading uh, uh, setups. Okay, so now I have C sharp on top, resolving into the C. Using solfege, uh, C sharp uh, instead of do, D. D. Do, triton substitution, flat two. Now it changes. Yeah, I see our our uh, our harmonic meaning changes from a C sharp. I'm gonna go to a D flat. Ra, ra, do. Okay. And maybe I shouldn't go into writing harmonic spellings because we don't have too much time. Now we're gonna move on. We're going to explore another position. Yeah, so I'm going to have my uh, fifth on top, fifth of the A7 and in the key of C, Mi. Mi, Fa. And with my triton substitution, I'm going to have the third of the E flat on top. Solfege, Sol, Fa. Sol, Fa. And now let's explore, let's go to the third chord. Third chord, so in the key of C, my third is in E7 or an E minor 7. Extension, uh, secondary dominant will be a B7, resolving into the E minor 7. Okay, so I'm in the B7, triton substitution, one, 
two, three, that's in F7. Resolving into the E minor seven. Okay, so let's explore some voice leading, yeah? Um, B7. Resolving to the E minor seven. Solfege. La, ti. La, ti. Now, Triton substitution, F7, resolving to the E minor 7. Solfege, soprano, Do, Ti. And let's move on and let's explore other positions. Yeah, so this is another position. And my third, the third of B7 is going to be on top, D sharp, solfege, Re. Re to Re. Re, Re. Now, in harmonic spelling, I'm going to change this D sharp into an E flat. Why? Because it belongs to an F. Me, Re. And let's explore some, another position. Now, I have F sharp on top. Sorry. So I have Fi, F sharp. Fi, Sol. Triton substitution, F7. Now I have A, La, Sol. La, Sol. And we're going to move on. Okay, this is a, a, quite a bit of a lecture I wasn't intending, so I'm going to go over like five minutes about, above my regular, my regular teaching time. But I think it's going to be good because you, then you can use this a part of the lecture. This is actually very important if, if you are uh, a songwriter or a composer or a performer. Okay, so now we're back into the key of C and we are going to end up on our fourth chord which is F major 7. So 4 chord, my secondary dominant of the 4th is C7. Now, triton substitution of the C7 is going to be a G flat 7 that is going to resolve to an F major 7 in everything in the key of C. So why don't we start? Okay, secondary dominant, 5, 7, or 4, resolving to the 4. So on the soprano I have te, te, do. Now we're gonna shift S a sub five substitute five seven or four, sub five seven or four resolving into the four. So G flat seven resolving to the F major seven. Solfege soprano ra do ra do. Actually, we should practice singing all the voices. You know, I, you know, I don't know if that's true, but um, I, use, I read it uh, in the classical period. You know, composers used to do that all the time. You know, they used to play all the figure bass, the four parts, and they sing, you know, any of the four voices. Yeah, and that's, that's one way of helping attention penetrate the harmony and focus on a certain part which usually would be covered by all the harmonic resonance and by doing that we bring it up front to our attention and we can focus on that. So now we're going to focus on a different position. I have uh, a, the third of the chord of C7 on top and resolving to F major 7. In this case solfege, Mi. 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 Now, sub 5 of 4 resolving to the 4 in this position, I'm going to have an F flat, which is the flat 7 of G flat. Resolving into F major 7. Okay. I'm going to Mi. Mi. In solfege, when we have a flat 4, it's called Fe. Fe, mi. I don't know if I should go into that depth. I think, um, actually, I know I'm running a little bit too much 
through this material. And it's because some students ask me to do it, but I should do a whole video taking my time, taking my time. And that video is going to be like a 30 minute video on Triton substitution uh, theory. Okay, we have one more position. We have um, C7 with the fifth on top, resolving to F major 7 with the third on top. And now we're moving on G flat, G flat 7 with the third on top, resolving to F major 7 now with the third on top. And moving on. Now we're going to go to the 5, and the 5 has its own secondary dominant, and the 5 has its own substitute secondary dominant. Back to the key of C, we have a 5-7, which is G. The 5-7 has its own secondary dominant, D7, that resolves to G7, and also it has its own triton substitution chord, which would be the A-flat 7, resolving to the G7. Now, let's explore. D7 with a flat 7 on top, resolving to G7 with a fifth on top. Now, try it on substitution, A flat 7, the fifth on top, resolving to the G7, also fifth on top. Now, we're going to explore a couple other voice leading positions. We have D7 with F sharp with a third on top. Resolving to G7, flat 7 on top. Fi, fa. Now let's move on to the sub 5, 7 of 5. A flat 7. We have the flat 7 on top. Resolving to the flat 7 in G7. C, fa. And moving on, we have another position here, D7, and in this case we have D7 with a, a fifth on top, resolving to G7 with a third on top. Or maybe I should call it correctly with the soprano voice. Okay. Now let's move on to the sub 5, 7 of 5 that is going to resolve to the 5, 7. A flat 7. Third on the soprano. G7, third on the soprano. We're going to sing Do, T. And we're going to move on to the last chord of the day, which is the 6 minor. I'm in the key of C. 6 minor can be an A minor or A minor 7. Actually, in this case, I should have written here a 6 minor 7. Uh, a minor 7. And that A minor 7 has a secondary dominant, the fifth above. That's E7. That is going to resolve to the A minor 7. Now, stretching our attention, that E7 has a tritone substitution. Uh -huh, a tritone below or above. And that would be B flat 7 that resolves to the A minor 7. So now we're going to play E7 resolving to the A minor 7. Triton substitution B flat 7 resolving to the A minor 7. And moving on, we have the E7 in a different position. Yeah, G sharp on top. Resolving to the A minor 7. So that G sharp in solfege, C, yeah, the augmented fifth. C, Sol. Now we're gonna play the sub 5, 7 of 5, the uh, triton substitution. In this case, we have a B flat. Resolving to the A minor 7. Maybe it's gonna sound better here. And we have a, the a soprano voice now that we're going to name it as an A flat. Yeah, so we're going to leave it, name it as a Le. Le Sol. As you can see already, solfege and the harmonic analysis are going hand in hand. 
and we're going to have one more position, one more position. We have this E7 resolving to the A minor 7. And we have the T on top resolving to the 2 on top, uh, to the 1 on top. Now, we have a B flat 7, triton substitution of the E, sub 5 7 of 6 resolving into the 6. B flat 7, A minor 7. Again, Re, Do. Okay, thank you for this extended class. I wanted to do some theory at the very end. Yeah, uh, cover uh, some basics of uh, triton substitution, uh, dominant voicings, and I hope that uh, it was helpful. I really planning in doing a lecture just on this. Yeah, and then uh, I probably should uh, have it as a separate video. Yeah, in both YouTube and Facebook. Okay, so it was great to be with all of you. And I think it's time to say goodbye until next week. So thank you for being with me in this live broadcast. We covered a lot of material and we're going to continue to do so in our next class. I'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Until then, have a wonderful week. Practice your instrument every day and listen and play lots of good music. See you next week.